All right. Well, another day, another episode of the Josh Cast. Josh Cast, brought to you by Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. Check the stove! Uh, it is brought to you by Obsessive Compulsive Disorder, because that's the first thing I wanted to talk about today as I attempt to get out of this parallel parking spot because uh, everyone parks too close. What a perfect metaphor for obsessive compulsive disorder. Not enough space between cars, already stressed, just starting my day. What is obsessive compulsive disorder? God, it's uh my brain saying, you know, instead of being overwhelmed by the inability to control all the real problems in my life, I'm going to create fake problems that I kind of can control. And as I control those fake problems, I momentarily feel better and fake myself into thinking that I have control when I don't. And somewhere, my brain said, I'm going to just go ahead and do that. And I said, okay. Well, you're the boss. You're the one in the driver's seat. So, for instance, if I'm afraid that I'm going to have a heart attack, I have to knock on wood and say, poo, poo, poo. Where did I get this ritual? I think I learned it from my mother, who does the same thing. Which begs an interesting question of, is obsessive compulsive disorder a learned trait, or is it genetic? I don't know. I, uh, I mean, I guess in my case, it's kind of both. That's what it seems like. When I look at our genetics, and I look at the people in our family, I, I'm not surprised that there's some gene in there that, uh, I got bumped. (laughs) I'm not sure how this whole genetics thing works. But I'm pretty sure that somewhere along the lines, one of those genes (laughs) had a little too much to drink. So I have to, I create these elaborate rituals. And so I knock on wood. I'm afraid I'm going to get a heart attack. I knock on wood. I feel momentarily better. I go, all right, I solved that. So I can go back to eating red meat and gluten. Perfect. Now here's the other, here's how deep this obsessive and compulsive goes. There are other rituals that I have that I'm afraid to talk about right now because just talking about them will bring up the fear. So the knocking on wood heart attack is the least scary, which as I say that is crazy because having a heart attack is scary. It makes me want to knock on wood right now, so I'm going to, and then say, poo, poo, poo. And I knocked on a business card, and here's what really threw me. Somebody recently told me that all the paper now is really not wood, it's recycled material. So all that time I was knocking on paper, none of those may count. So now I'm wondering, do I need to go you know, find a redwood tree somewhere and just take two weeks consistently knocking to make up for the knocking that didn't happen before? Because apparently it's easier to do this than it is to solve my problems. My goodness, we've got a lot of traffic today. Ah, yes. So that's obsessive compulsive disorder in a nutshell. In, a, in a, a non-wooden nutshell. So the nutshell is useless to me. I'm sorry, I'm a little rattled because the uh, a few seconds ago there was a truck that almost ran into another truck behind me. Uh, and that was... That was scary. That was scary. Let's talk about that. I'm in a Honda. A Honda can protect me, relatively speaking. But when I'm surrounded by these giant trucks, who needs a truck in North Hollywood? Who needs a truck? 
Has that guy with the big, huge star on the back of his truck cab, has he moved anything with that truck? Sorry, this other truck got in the way. I know you're in a rush to get to your audition. What are you using? Are you using that truck to lift your acting choices? Jesus! That's good. I like this. The, the podcast combines my uh, all of my other neuroses with road rage. Perfect. 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 So I, uh, how am I doing? How's how are things going? How's the how's the depression, Josh? Josh, how's the depression? Well, uh, I think that the depression's always there, and what I'm able to do is when I get busy and stressed enough, I forget about it. So I bury it, but it's always I feel like it's always been there, and that it, if I have enough time to myself. If I have enough spare time, if I you know if uh, if I really clear my calendar, I can. Um, I can bring that sucker back up to the surface. And it, you know what, and here's what I still don't know is, is it conditional? Is it because I'm not where I'm at in my life and career? And if I were at my, where I wanted to be in my life and career, would I not, would the depression go away? And I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to have this fear that it won't. Because I think it ha- it's connected with how I cope with stress and how I cope with bad things that happen. In that, I can't. I don't cope with them well. And I think that's why I find myself living as structured a life as possible with as much repetition and um, sameness of scheduling as possible and how, for instance, even... I get anxiety thinking about trying a new TV show. Oh, you should watch Game of Thrones. Like, I didn't get on the Game of Thrones train. And the thought of having to get on that train now and all the hours that I would have to put into it, what if I do like it? Maybe that's the fear. That says, what if I do like it? And then I've got to watch it, and it's another thing i got to do. And it stresses me out. And it's just easier to go watch an episode of Next Generation that I've seen a hundred times. And I just just reading, there's a scientific study that shows that. That's what, it, that's what a lot of people want that. They don't want when they're watching TV at home, necessarily. They don't want uh, the unfamiliar. They want to feel the familiar, the safe, the comfortable. It's been a long day of work. I don't know. I don't know if I have the emotional energy to handle. Okay, this is another thing I got to talk about. I'm sorry. I know this is wrong of me to say this. Bicyclists. I know I've talked about this before. I keep coming back to this. I know they have a right to be here. I know I'm in the wrong for feeling frustrated. But when I see somebody on a bicycle who is moving at the speed of Congress and there's a car stuck behind that bicycle, I get frustrated. And they try. I mean, there's a bike lane on this particular street. But is it a bike lane or is it a dream of a bike lane? Because inevitably, somebody's got to make a left turn and you got to deal with the bicyclists on top of everything else now. And yes, I know it's better for the environment. I know, I know, I know I'm in the wrong when I complain. I know I have no right. I'm the one with the problem. I get that. I hear you. I hear you. I'm the one with the problem. I get that. But by the same token, I want all people on bicycles to stop. I want them to all buy Humvees. And let's just... Let's just end it! (laughs) I get so I want to force them to drive a Humvee. I want to force them to drive a Humvee and never work out. And be the slob that I am. That's I want to I want to condemn them to that. And you know something? I think if they spend a day in their Humvee 
not having to deal with bicyclists, I really believe I win them over. They'll see my they'll see my side of it. They will see that I'm fighting God's fight. Now I'm freaked out that I'm going to hit someone on a bicycle, knocking on wood. Poop, poop, poop. I'm freaking out that taking the moment to knock on wood while I'm in the car will contribute to me hitting someone on a bicycle, knocking on wood again. Poop, poop, poop. Obsessive compulsive disorder. That's my morning. What helps me with the depression is projects. So keeping myself busy. That's... That's my life, is I have to constantly keep myself busy to kind of stay, stay ahead, step ahead of the depression. And so one of the projects I've been playing with is I just, uh, uh, it's leading to, I guess, a segment of the podcast. I'm going to have segments now. It's a segment I like to call, Josh Looks at Art. da 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 Josh Looks at Art. Now as I say that, it's odd. I'm watching a dog poop. Um... And that seems to be perfectly timed for me saying Josh looks at art because I, in some artists' exhibits, that's probably been a thing. There's been a dog pooping. And that's considered a piece of abstract art. The process of it. Life in motion. Life and death, a cycle. Starring Timmy the Poodle. That was not the art I wanted to discuss today. The art I wanted to discuss today uh, was Rembrandt. And what I do is I don't read anything about the guy or the life. I just look at the paintings, and then I react to what I see on the paintings. I have no art degree. I have no idea what I'm talking about. This is totally um, not useful information. If you happen to be an art student and you're studying Rembrandt, nothing of what I tell you is going to help you. If anything, it's probably going to hurt. So when I notice with the Rembrandt paintings, my first thought is, oh, this guy knows what he's doing. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, yeah, this is, I see why this guy's hot. I get it. I see why there's heat here. One picture, like he's so good with the paint, you can tell how the room was lit when he painted it. Or he's even better with the paint, and the room wasn't even lit that way, but he was able to imagine that it would be lit that way and painted that way. In which case... Man, this guy's good. I think this guy might be a genius. Uh, he painted a lot of self-portraits. And so we saw... I got to see basically a, a flip book of Rembrandt from youth to old age. And uh, I think this man did not avoid gluten from what I can see. He embraced gluten and sugar, and all that kind of stuff. This was not a man who was on the paleo diet. This was not a man who uh, was doing Zumba. Uh, This was a lover of life. Some of his, there was one painting he painted that was so, that looked like it was a photograph, practically. And that was very impressive. And the woman that he painted, I'm sure, was not thrilled. (laughs) Because he, uh, that's, you know, he held up the mirror and said, this is exactly what is there. We're not, you know, this is, this is it. We're not going to deify this at all. This is you, 100%. I am telling you the truth. Can you handle it? There's one self-portrait he did of a, a nobleman. And I don't know if the nobleman requested to look depressed in the painting or if Rembrandt said listen I've tried to make you look happy but uh, I just I'm you know this is a day where even Rembrandt's not a Rembrandt I don't know what to tell you you have issues you need to see a therapist why don't you go see a therapist and then come back and then I'll try to paint someone who doesn't look like they're about to jump off a building Or actually, this is the 1600s in in the Netherlands. You look like somebody who's about to walk into a windmill. My God, man. Uh, 
go, I don't know, go take a Prozac. My God. There were a few Rembrandt paintings, and again, I haven't done the research, I don't know what the history of this is, but he's painting a picture of a bunch of guys performing an autopsy on a corpse. Now, I'm going to assume that he was really in the room painting these guys doing the autopsy. I could be totally wrong about that, but that's, that's got to be a weird thing. S having someone in the room saying, hey, can you just, can you hold the brain like that? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Hold the brain like that. Great. Beautiful. And the creepy thing about this painting, other than the whole, we're performing an autopsy and it's being painted by the guy who normally paints, you know, images of the, you know, the, the biblical images. What's really creepy about it is that he's even somehow conveying something on the expression of the dead guy. Like it's, it's, there's a dead, I mean, there's a, even though the guy is dead, there's somehow an emotion which reads, ah, I'm dead, ah, ah, God, I can feel it every, I can feel everything. That's a creepy ass painting, I'll tell you right there. I'm not denying the guy's a genius. That's not, I don't know, do people buy those paintings and hang it up in the living room of their house? This is my Rembrandt. This is, yeah, he's dissecting a human brain. Would you like some more uh, dip? <laughs> That's a lovely thing to put in your living room right there. My goodness. That is a creep show. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Rembrandt. I recommend him. I, I give him five stars. Five out of five stars. Rembrandt. Go check him out at your local museum. I think that guy really knew what he was doing. Rembrandt. So that helps with the depression. But now that's done. Now that segment's over and I'm back to having to deal with depression and obsessive compulsive disorder. Not necessarily in that order. Yeah, actually, pretty much in that order. It's depression and then obsessive compulsive disorder. And uh, I... Yeah, it almost feels like where the depression is concerned... Excuse me, I'm yawning. I haven't had my morning uh, decaffeinated tea. I can't drink caffeine anymore because it upsets my bladder. My bladder muscle is not fully contracting or whatever. And it's spasming, so it's worse when I have caffeine. So I haven't been drinking green tea, which is the one healthy thing that I can do. That was it. The one healthy thing. Drink green tea. I've been drinking chamomile. What is chamomile tea? I don't even think it's a tea. I think they're just taking dandelions and putting it in hot water. When it's cloudy out, that, that, by the way, doesn't help with the depression. Uh, here's the thing. I, I keep talking about this, too. I'm going to bring it up again because it's happening again. Where they, they're trimming the trees along the street, but why are you doing it during rush hour? Do it in the middle of the day. It's always best to trim trees in the middle of the day. Oh, maybe it's a heat thing. They don't want to be doing it in the, in the heat. Oh, well, now I have to have compassion for people. Damn it. Fine. Fine. Trim your trees. Actually, I can use some of that wood to knock on. Hey, callback. Uh, so, how, how are you doing? <laughs> I don't care. If I cared, I'd have a guest. I should care more. I should care more. I should care more, but I'm distracted by this Chevy Impala that has just driven up next to me. The Impala is a kind of animal, right? It's a deer or something. And I've got to tell you, this car looks nothing. I think of the deer 
or if the if the actual Impala found out that this was the car that it was named after, it would go, "Wow, do you? Uh, what did I do to you? <laughs> wow, that's an insult. What did I do to you?" I mean, it's not a bad-looking car. I just wouldn't equate it with a hooved land animal. I, I, I wouldn't call it the Impala. It's not an Impala. It doesn't, I think, you know, it's, it's a, uh, what is it? I think it's a pig. That's what it, it's a pig. And I say that as a compliment because I hear good things about pigs in terms of their intelligence and their, their sense of uh, consciousness, which makes me feel guilty for the amount of bacon I've eaten. Yeah, I'm so bad when it comes to the vegetarianism and having compassion for animals. I need to be better about that. I'm very bad about that. I find ways of rationalizing it that are not good. I say to myself, well, if I order bacon right now, I mean, they have bacon. The, the, the pig has already been killed. It's happening. It's happened already. So I'm not a bad person because I'm only eating something that has already been killed. It's already happened. Now, if I killed the pig myself, then I would be a horrible person. But by having somebody else kill the pig in a room that's different than the room I'm in, I am what I would like to call a saint. So that's how I get around that. Another way of tap dancing around the depression. Tap dancing around the depression. Tap dancing around the depression. It's drizzling today. That doesn't help with the depression either. I find the weather is a the weather is a problem when it comes to the depression. It makes it worse when it's cloudy. That's so odd. Why does it do that? And that's the problem. My my, uh, the, I'm only happy, I guess, when the sun is out. But when the sun is out, I'm in my head over getting skin cancer from the ultraviolet radiation. So there's really, I think really the theme of this podcast is that there is no way to win. Death is inevitable. And Rembrandt, hey, you know what? Not that bad. <laughs>